Hey everyone, in this video I'll be talking about some new concept and research paper that I've been looking into. And this is specifically about stability analysis of Tesla valve based on uh, neutral circulation loop for decay heat removal. And as you go on through this presentation, you'll understand why this is an important and pivotal topic for the incoming and upcoming of electric sector market. So just a general overview, in nuclear power plants, we use the process of decay heat removal, which is very crucial for safe operation for the plant. And using this circulation loops, we also make the process reliable and cheaper. And because of that, such systems are subjected to instability when both heater and condenser are horizontally positioned. So as we can see, it's horizontally positioned and one of the methods is to overcome such difficulties and this is why we perhaps use something such as a Tesla valve, okay? So you might not know what a Tesla valve is and this is what it is. So basically it's a one-way valve with no moving parts in it and it allows liquids to flow easily in one direction, okay? And what it does is that it provides high impedance in the opposite direction. So you might wonder what it looks like. So before I show you what it actually looks like, you, under, you need to understand what the process is for the Tesla wall. I mean, what does it actually do? So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Here we have a boiler. What's really happening, first I would like you to take a look at the figure of it so see how it is designed it goes like this and then like this okay and you have a boiler over here now you have water over here which is boiling obviously you have a heat out where the steam goes out the feed in is where the water is put through this is where the water is boiling what the f really happens is that the boiling particles are then went into this tunnel and then as it goes down it realizes that this is kind of cold so it goes back up and the heat transfer is really happening knowing how it functions and seeing the diagram of how it actually is structured we realize that how the boiling particles are then cooled down and how this part area of the boiler is not even put into a heat zone so there is literally no heat so you might wonder what the Tesla valve is actually about this is the natural circulation loop of a boiler and what we are doing is using this natural circulation basic idea the basic phenomena used in this and applying it to the Tesla valve the Tesla valve is not a big deal because it does not even look like the one that I mentioned before. However, the, it's all in the design. The fact that there are so many different valves here is the one that's differentiating everything. So you can see the ones that I've highlighted is what's really separating the heat molecules from the cold ones and turning the heat ones into the reverse direction opposing the fluids itself to cool itself down and that is what it is so this is the Tesla valve. now it has nothing to do with the Tesla car alright now you might want to know how this actually really functions when we have a car overview of a car in general alright if you want to take an overview broad over you then this is what it looks like so to begin you have the car this is the front of the car and this is the back. Now assuming your car is moving at a rate of 60 mph. Obviously you can see that since the battery is being overheated, it needs to cool otherwise it's going to explode. But technically whenever you drive your car the battery never really explodes. So how does that really function? This is where the Tesla valve comes into the action. Basically what really happens is that the energy, the heatness present in the battery which is located in here 
that functions your right and left wheels okay to move the car forward in this direction gets heated up as your car moves these two valves which are known as the tesla valves okay takes the airflow from this so you have to understand if your car is moving in this direction the airflow is actually going in this direction okay since the airflow goes in this direction the heat of the battery is being transferred from one section of the compartment to the other this area is the one where heat and coolness are together and merged once merged then the coil particles have been cooled off and it leaves from the back of the car if you think about it the whole process takes no more than few seconds to happen in this region we have we used the same design that we used in the circular boiler doing so what we see is that the cool and the battery heatness of a battery really lowers down so the temperature gets low when the air flows in and obviously air is going to flow in if the car is moving forward all right now what if we have something as when we are reversing the car the battery can the battery cool itself well really what's really happening if you're reversing your car normally practically speaking you won't be moving at a high speed but say you were if you were the same reverse things can really happen the air flows in from this it cools down here because the battery present here the cool battery leaves the hot air from this side and this side the coolness the abiotic section is the where your coolness of the battery remains so the battery never really gets hot and your temperature is controlled now in conclusion if you were to test it out using a different pipeline of your uh, circulation of a boiler in this sense we can see that the green area is where the coolness is really present even using this kind of design to circulate the heat and transfer the molecules we can see that the heat is never really present using these two designs if i were to use this design and compare it with the actual temperature this is the temperature this is the where temperature really is hot this is the temperature where it's being cooled down and we we can see one side of the part where the temperature is cool and the other side is relatively hot however due to the difference the whole section of the car is being there the temperature is low all right and the heat and the coolness is being merged together keeping the battery stable and steady for you to flow at the speed you want to if you like this video give it a like and this is the conclusion that the research paper has presented to reiterate the article that we presented can be found at this link so hope you guys have a good day thanks for watching